three years ago, it, everything was on pace, right? COVID happened four years ago. COVID happened after COVID, they printed a whole bunch of money and then they were going to push for climate change. And that's most, that push for, for regulation and spending to fight clim climate change coming out of Europe. Why? Because Europe doesn't have any collateral. Why? Because Europe doesn't have any oil or coal or uranium or any, or natural gas. They have some, but they don't have nearly enough to run their, uh, run an economy of 600 million people, 700 million people. They just don't have it. So, and this is the age old European story of I, we will colonize the rest of the world, pay, pay pennies on the dollar or the euro or the pound or the, the franc or whatever, and then bring all those resources back to Europe and run our industrial uh, and run our, to run our industrial capacity and out compete everybody. This is how, this is how Europe operated for well, 500 years going into uh, the 20th century until the United States became the industrial power of the world. Now, after World War II, Europe is bombed back to the, basically bombed back to the Stone Ages, and we have to rebuild them. And the, U the U.S. is okay with that because there's a massive investment opportunity there. Now we get into so that's all running, right? And that whole like that whole system is running, and it's all in cahoots, right? NATO, the Cold War, the you know the the, the long term goal was always we're eventually going to deal with Russia, and we're going to break Russia up. The United States adopts Britain's foreign policy um, starting around the Wilson administration just before World War I of, yes, Russia's the problem. We want their, and we want their resources. How are we going to do this? Well, the, the Brits are absolutely the masters of the color revolution. Hell, they created it. So um, they created the, 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 you put soft power on the ground. You undermine the local government by empowering dissident groups and giving them money, building the building thing up, taking over the media. And then, and then eventually when you get to the right moment in time, when you've destabilized that country, either through both political and cultural destabilization, as well as economic destabilization, then you wait for the right moment. You put the right people in, boom, Bob's your uncle. And you can, you can create a revolution. It doesn't matter whether it's Egypt or Ukraine or Georgia or this one or that one, it's, this is the plan. And it's always been this way. And can I interrupt you quick? Sure. I can interrupt you. Yeah. So you said something very interesting. It's like, this is the plan to destabilize and taking this to the Russian Ukraine war. You have Western Europe and the U S if you would, they're, they don't want to end this war. It's obvious, but there's also this war is going on and really started it is pretty because pretty much because we want Russia's assets and that's their sure. commodity, natural resource assets. I just want clarity. That's what you're saying. Yeah. That's really what I'm talking about. Because that's where that's look, it's like Europe wants that they're, they, the, the Brits want the, the, the Brits have always wanted to extend the British empire for as long as possible. Okay. When they were a maritime empire, it worked when they were an industrial empire. It was fine. After that, they transitioned into being a financial empire. They took their they took the wealth that they created during the during the first two hundred years of the Bank of England from sixteen ninety four right. up and through up until the end of basically Reconstruction in the United States. When Lincoln's when Lincoln, this is the interesting part about it. I'm no fan of Abraham Lincoln, but there's a way of looking at the United States war between the states because they refused to call it a civil war. Is that this was really a French and British color revolution attempt to split the North, to get the North and South to fight each other and split the South off and turn the South into a permanent colony of, of, of Europe. We, they were the raw, the raw commodity providers in the South. They had, we had, the, the Europe had captured markets because of tariffs and rules and covenants and everything else. And the industrial North was angry about this. And so they put tariffs on the South in order to try and level the playing field. The goal, of course, was to strangle the American, burgeoning American industrial baby in the crib, right? And so that there was no competition between, you know, continental Europe and, and Britain. Makes perfect sense when you think of it in those terms. Now, Lincoln surviving, or the United States surviving as one country, was a failed color revolution in a, in a sense. It caused a civil war, caused the North and South to go to war for five years, and it caused the subjugation of the South by the North and reconstruction and all the horrors of that and, and all the rest of it. And, and in no way, matter, shape or form am I absolving Lincoln of, of any of that. And I'm, my heart is still with the South. Hell, I live in the South. Um, but I, I recognize that I, I recognize that as one, 
way of looking at the U.S. Civil War now that in a way that I didn't even five years ago. So, or the war between the states. So now let's now let's think about that. When that failed, Britain had to change strategy. For a hundred years, they were our greatest enemy. And then somehow, right around the turn of the the twentieth century, they started to become our, they started to schmooze us and become our ally. Until we got so they helped put globalists in charge of the American government, starting with Wilson. We got the League of Nations, which fails. We get you know everything else, but we get Wilson to go in to not Wilson, sorry Hoover. I always get those two mixed up because they both suck. Um, who? Um, right. It's Herbert Hoover and the League of Nations. So. Take all the Wilsons, replace them with Hoover. I, I know my my history. I just always, I always, always mix those two guys up. Um, but you get Wilson gives us World War I and then saves Britain's bacon because the Brits and the French had borrowed a tremendous amount of money from the United States, from American investors, to fight World War I. And they needed the U.S. to come in at that point. And this is, I'm setting up what's happening today. Um, in order to finally win the war and guarantee the repayment of that debt, okay? So, and this is partially what causes, of course, what causes the Treaty of Versailles, the, the, the German hyperinflation, and that 20 years of basically German humiliation, which leads to Hitler and everything else. And there's a French uh, general who uh, famously said that, you know, the Treaty of Versailles wasn't a, an armistice. It was a 20-year ceasefire. Right. Right. So, right. so and we're setting that up now because my friend, my good friend, Alex Craner, who, if you haven't spoken to Alex, you should absolutely have him on the show. I would because, love to. Yeah. And because what Alex figured out in, re, in recent days was, and he's published and he and I have talked about is that the bank of England is on the hook as the guarantor for a lot of Ukraine's world bank debt. Okay. And now the bank of England, by the way, if the Bank of England loses money, guess who's on the hook to guarantee that the repayment of the of the losses to the Bank of England, the British Parliament, the British people. So there's about somewhere around two hundred plus billion dollars worth of losses on the Bank of England's balance sheet from both the uh, the guilt crisis of 2022, which cost Liz Truss her job. That was about 160 billion. And then there's about 40 to $50 billion worth of Ukraine debt that the Bank of England is guaranteeing that Ukraine is now defaulted on. As of August 1st, they defaulted on. And so the Bank of England is now in a very ugly position. And they and so Britain absolutely needs this war extended. We don't care about $50 billion worth of the, the debt that the Brits, that the Ukrainians owe us. We have $50 billion every week. It doesn't matter. But for the Brits, that's literally... You know, fifteen percent of, uh, of annual GDP is a lot of money, and yeah. it's it's it for them, and 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 they're as fallen as they are. This is a problem. So they're running the same playbook, which is that the United States is going to have to come in and bail out Britain from their bad bets. Now, at the same time, BlackRock and J.P. Morgan and a lot of other American uh, companies, and yes, the Rothschilds are involved in Ukraine and have guaranteed a lot of this debt as well, and. They want the United States to come in and and fix this problem. Meanwhile, Putin is sitting on the other side going, seen this playbook before. You guys did this to us as a revolution, which was another British color revolution. One way one could look at it. Yeah, we're not going that route. So we're not going to give you your cookie. We're not going to give you World War III. So what, what Putin keeps doing is taking a punch to the mouth taking the, the, these escalations, the bombing of the Kerch Strait Bridge, the bombing of Nord Stream 2, the attack on the, 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 the Opera House in Moscow, the, the, the drone attack on a Moscow uh, apartment complex just last night or the night before. Like, he's taking those, in, in, in the, he's taking those punches to the mouth, the Kursk invasion, uh, incursion. And he's going, look, we know how to play this. We've, we've watched them do this before. Yeah, and we're not, and we're just not going to take the bait. We're not going to give you a moral reason to create a just war to go into to 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 escalate and start drafting your people and everything else. And the longer this goes on, the worse the ti- the the financial noose tightens around the 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 people of the West. So that's one angle on that as of October, September twenty twenty four. 